Thanks for joining me on Facebook, on a couple different Facebook channels right now, on Instagram, and of course, YouTube as always. So if you're tuning in live right now, drop a comment, hashtag live. If you're on the replay, uh, drop a comment, hashtag replay. Uh, I am going to talk about our Italy 2020 trip to um, uh, Italy, uh, it's Italy no, this November. Uh, we are having, uh, most of you know that we do trips to Italy. Uh, last year we went to Spain. Uh, good morning, everybody who's joining us live. Thank you. Uh, hello, David. Uh, hello, people on Facebook. Um, I can't see everybody because I have several different things going on here and several different screens. We're live streaming three different locations right now. And this will go on uh, YouTube very, very, very soon. So thanks for tuning in. So Italy. Italy, Italy. So a lot of people these last two weeks have been asking us about our Italy 2020 trip, which is this November. You can find all the the whole itinerary on our website, aromatimebistro.com. Click on the top link that says travel, um, or you can go to VIP, VIP wineryvacations.com. And um, those are the best places. Uh, both those sites mirror each other, by the way. If you go to vipwineryvacations.com, you'll see more options there. You'll see our Central Italy trip that just happened. You'll see our Southern Italian trip. Um, we'll have a Northern Italian trip posted there at some point and a, and a way, way Southern trip, a Sicilian trip posted there soon for two years from now. Um, we have a really big offer that we do with those trips. So if you're a nonprofit organization, your nonprofit and you want to do your own private trips, your own dates, uh, and you provide up to 24 people, Jamie and I will donate $10,000 to your organization. We will totally donate 10 grand to your organization. It has to be nonprofit, charity. It can be anywhere in the country. We we're just talking to a couple last night from California who said they can get 24 people together for their nonprofit that they're doing out there. So, um, and those though that is the Central Italy trip, we would duplicate that trip for you, and that would be um, uh, your own um, your own itinerary, I'm sorry, your own dates, uh, just your group, and you provide the people, we do the marketing, we help you market, all that, we handle all the money payments, we do payment plans for your guests and all that kind of stuff, and we just, um, we basically give you $10,000 at the end of the trip. So, we donate it back to your organization. So let's talk about our scheduled trip to Southern Italy. Jamie and I were just there. so. This last November, 2019, just a month or so ago, Jamie and I went a week early. Uh, we took our group, our 24 guests, to Central Italy. Then we we proceeded to go a week early, and Jamie and I went all through Apulia, Apulia, Campania, and Basilicata. We scouted out the whole route uh, for this upcoming November. November, uh, let's see the exact dates. I want to make sure. We fly out on a Friday uh, out of New York or wherever you can fly from, folks. You don't need to be living in New York to go on these trips with this. How it works is we suggest flights for you. You get the flights and you meet us. We pick you up at the airport, okay? There's other trips out there, other tour operators that do this that don't pick you up at the airport. You have to find your way to the hotel. We say, okay, here are all the flights that are incoming from the U.S. Uh, and we're going to basically pick you up at the airport, basically, um, at the, at the best time so everybody can jump on. Now, some people like to go early. Some people like to go two, three days early and go to Rome, go to Naples, do whatever, stay in Milan. We've done all these trips and that's where they go. They go early or they stay late and then they meet us at the first stop or they meet us at the hotel, perfectly fine. You are the flexibility of doing that. So the trip is November 6th to the 15th, November 6th to the 15th. We fly out on the 6th. Uh, the way it works is you fly out usually four, five, six, seven, eight o'clock flight out, you head overseas. You land in the morning between like 8 and 11 o'clock. This is typical, to typical how this works. And so you land on Saturday. So we have Saturday lunch all the way through dinner, and then we rock and roll uh, for the whole week and the whole uh, up until the following Saturday. And then Sunday, typically, the tour ends and we take you back to the airport by noon. The flights typically leave by noon, and that's how that works. But Here's our schedule for Southern Italy, folks. Southern Italy is amazing. Uh, we fly in, get a connecting flight from Rome into Bari. Uh, Bari is the biggest mm -hmm. airport uh, in Southern Italy besides Naples, I believe. Um, so on that side, in that area, um, there's an airport in Brindisi and there's other airports, other places, but Bari is the biggest airport. 
um, we fly in and out of Bari. By the way, I just went to look up flights last week. And, you know, you have to wait 330 days to book flights. So the flights are just now becoming available. And typically when the flights first get launched, they're $1,200, $1,000. Um, I actually found flights last week for five seventy-five. dollars uh, Norwegian. Norwegian going into Rome out of JFK, I believe. And then um, landing in Rome and switching uh, to Ryanair. Um, five seventy-five. I found these flights for. Um, so really an awesome price. We have some, so we have some really good leads on where to get flights. What companies can, can, can get you the best deals. Um, and we point you in that direction. Most people take the same group of flights. Like Alitalia is great because Alitalia, what they do is they have like three flights that leave JFK on a Friday night, like four, Five, four thirty, five thirty, and like seven, like whatever it is. They're like every other hour, every hour and a half, they're leaving to go to Rome. So that's awesome. So that means three flights coming in the next day in the morning. It's really awesome. Uh, all Italian, Norwegian is great. Um, um, Turkish Air is Turkish Air is awesome, but Turkish Air typically takes you into um, um, Istanbul Airport. Uh, and then you have to fly back to Rome. We've made that mistake once. Uh, however, the Istanbul airport is amazing. It's like four stories, tons and tons of shopping, cool stores. Um, I mean, the Istanbul airport is great, but don't fly to Istanbul just for their airport. Uh, we don't suggest that. But Turkish Air, the quality of the flight, the quality of the food on the flights is awesome. So if you ever get an opportunity to, Turkish Air is, is um, in the realm of where you're traveling, going to Europe. I would definitely recommend uh, uh, Turkish Air, but for Italy, it's not that feasible. So um, we fly into Bari, and then we immediately start. We immediately start um, heading to wineries and getting some food. Uh, so some of the cities that we're visiting down there. Now, everything's laid out on VIPWineryVacations.com, VIPWineryVacations.com. You can find the whole itinerary there. Um, things do change a little bit here and there. We can add things. Um, we can make things that you know might work a little differently or rearrange the schedule. Um, but basically, that's, that's, the, that's the, the itinerary. We head down to Lecce. Lecce is the... Um, is an amazing, amazing city in the south. It is called um, uh, the, the Florence of the South. We have the hotel already picked out. Jamie and I have spent the night, we spent two nights at this hotel. We're only going there for one night. We ended up spending two nights there. Amazing, amazing property. Same thing happened in Matera. We're only going for one night. The hotel and the city of Matera was amazing. We spent a whole extra night there and moved our schedule around. And these are things that we learn when we go scout out the areas so we can now know when we take 24 people with us how what works the best how what there is to do in these areas so folks lecce is an amazing amazing city in the south um you're only about 45 minutes from the cape um from the cape in the uh on the, of the heel of the boot in lecce you're only 15 minutes 30 minutes the most from each shore East coast, west coast of the heel. It's narrow down there. Um, there's 60 million olive oil, olive trees for 4 million, um, for 4 million, um, um, 4 million residents. There's, you land in the plane and all you see are fields and fields of olive trees. You go to the gas station, they have olive trees out there. There's olives, there's olive. It's like our mountain has blueberries here in Ellenville. Um, they have olive trees everywhere. Um, and some of those trees are several hundred years old. It's really cool. Uh, Apulia is definitely the capital of, of olive trees, olive oil production. Um, they make some really high quality and some questionable qualities of oil. Just depends upon who you're buying from. You obviously you have to pay for it. Jamie's dropping links right now to VIP winery vacations. She's following uh, these lives. And again, I'm on live several different places. My personal account, my Aroma Time Facebook page, and um, Aroma Time Instagram. So hello to everybody who's watching. There's a lot of people watching on all three of those. And this will definitely go on to YouTube. Um, so I'm just running down again the itinerary for Italy. Uh, that's this November. Um, if you're interested now, here's what happens. We've already sold like eight or 10 tickets. It's just happened in the last like week, week and a half. People are now starting to say, hey, here's my money. We have like 50, 60 people that say, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And as I'm reaching out to some of them, they're like, ah, oh, I can't, I can't miss that understandable. This is why we plan a year out, folks, because um, we're not just going to throw something on you in two, three, four, five, six months. We're giving you a year in advance to plan. Um, here's what happens, though. When people start booking, 
Then they go see their friends. They're gonna see their friends for New Year's. They're gonna see their friends, right? See their friends for the holidays. They're like, oh my gosh, we are we are going to Italy with Aroma Time with Marcus and Jamie. Here's the trip, and their friends look at it and their friends like, count us in. We want to go too. And this happened the last couple trips. So what happens is then all of a sudden we have to start turning people away because we're oversold. So um if you know a friend right now who might be interested to go on this with you, share the link with them, share VIP winery vacations with them. Um, we had to turn, we turned away about 16 people on our last trip. We just, we, just, we, we, we only do 24 people because that gets us a smaller bus. We can get into some, we can get into to, to better areas, smaller areas. Some of the wineries that we go to, the roads are too small. The entrances are too small. One of the last, the last, this last trip we did going to um, Maturo, um, they, um, they had to, we had to park out of the city square and the winery had to send two small cars back and forth because we couldn't get into that little village. And I made a joke with the owner because his son's the mayor. I'm like, can't you like make them expand the archer? But it's, it's such a cute, these cute little cities, these roads, these countrysides, the roads are small folks. So we can't take a 55 seat coach bus through a lot of these roads. Um, it just wouldn't work. So Dana, you're running the uh, marathon in November. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, the uh, Palermo, Palermo running their marathon. Very, very cool. So, so if you know people that are interested, might be interested in the trip that want to go with you, because it's, it's fun when you go with friends. You're gonna make a lot of friends. You're gonna make a lot of friends. I mean, people, the 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 um, the friends you make on a trip like this for nine days. Is amazing. I mean, these are lifelong friends. But if you have friends that 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 would go with you, it's it's just as it's just just that much better. So, pin uh, uh, pinpoint these people, get them get them to commit early. So here's what we do. We do an, a financing plan. There's zero finance charge. There's I mean it it's super simple. We do four payments. It's forty five hundred dollars a person. We do four payments. Um, there's no interest Four payments every 60 days. You give us a quarter of the trip and it's that simple. It's like clockwork. If you need a little longer time, we can, cause we're a year out. We're booking a year out folks. We have that flexibility to do that, to book a year out. Okay. It's not like we're going in May and we, you have to be paid now and we're still trying to book seats. We're going in November. It's November 6th to the 15th. If you go to VIP, Jamie's dropping links to VIP Winery Vacations, hit that link, share that link. When you hit the Southern Italian trip, you open that picture up. Folks, that is Matera right there. That is the city of Matera. The hotel that Jamie and I stayed in were renovated caves. Half of their rooms are renovated caves. The other rooms are amazing, larger rooms, beautiful, beautiful showers, beautiful views, be amazing rooms. We're staying two or three nights in Matera, folks. It's, it, it's the... It's one of the oldest cities in the world, 9,000 years old. Italy's rock city, it's called. Until the 50s, people were living, still living in caves, like primitively living in caves. Not renovated caves, but like caves. There were cave dwellers there until the 50s. Some books you read, some articles you read, there were still people there up until the early 70s doing it. I'm not sure. I wasn't there. I don't know. But there's two conflicting stories, the 50s and the 70s. Um, we were there in November. They're like, oh, we're not going to turn the heat on for another month if, you know, it barely gets used here, the heat. We're like, oh, my gosh, this is great. Um, awesome, awesome city. So we were literally in short sleeve shirts la this last November, short sleeve shirts. Then we came back to New York and it was 20 degrees, 25 degrees. It was up into the 70s. Right now, the low in the area we're talking about in Italy, the low, the low at night is 50 degrees. So this is what we're talking about weather next year and we go. So it's not going to be super, you know, hot, this and that, but it's going to be very tempered. It's going to be very nice. Um, sh uh, short sleeve shirts, a light jacket, things like that. Um, some of the Italians will overdress at 50 degrees, but for us, 50 degrees, like right now here this morning, I ran, it was 29 degrees out when I ran. 50 degrees is, is, is we're acclimated to that. So it's no problem. 50 degrees is nothing for us uh, at night. So um, because we're down south um, and we're going to be on both coasts, so we're going to Matera in Lecce, we're going to Monopoli, we're going to Manduria. Manduria is home of Primitivo. Primitivo is basically American Zinfandel. American Zinfandel, the big red juicy Zinfandels from California, they originated uh, from Primitivo from Italy. Italy has 1,300 grapes, folks, 1,300 different grapes. Um, if you don't like Italian wine, chances are you've probably skipped 1,200 
1,200 grape varietals, 1,250. You've skipped most Italian grape varietals. If you say you don't like Italian wine, you need to experiment. We're going to show you grape varietals that are only indigenous to these little small areas. Every region of Italy has their own grapes that they're known for. Um, I'm getting asked right now, Raj, your favorite Italian wine. My, I have a couple favorite Italian wines. I love I love Tarassi, which is uh, Alianico. I love Volturi, which is Alianico, both of those grapes, those are regions. I love Mandurian Pinot uh, Primitivos. Um, I'm a real big fan of Barolo, Brunello, Amorone. Um, I'm such a big fan of Barolo that I named um, my parents' dog a couple years ago, the Border Collie, Barolo. Uh, so if you've ever seen that with my dogs, my dogs now, I'm calling Baxter and Barolo. And when an Italian's with us or wine lovers, somebody who knows wine, they're like, your dog's name, do you name him after Barolo? I'm like, yeah, I named the dog after Barolo. So everybody's like, oh, what's the next dog? I'm going to name him Barbaresco. I love Barbaresco wines. Barbaresco is awesome. So I love Northern. I love, I'm in love with Pinot Noirs, Pinot Nero from Northern Italy, um, from the Alto Adige, from that region up there. The Pinot Neros up there are superb. They're amazing. I love that Cap Francs from up there are dynamite as well. Um, so I love a lot of different types of Italian wine. Um, Raj was asking me there on, 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 on one of the accounts I'm on on, on Facebook. So um, Monopoli, Molfetta, these cities are on the ocean. These are on the coast. We'll be on the coast. We'll be staying. We will be staying um like the sea's right there. We'll be visiting vineyards that are bumping up to the sea. Um, these vineyards are, they bump up, the vines like go right up to the ocean. The street is there at the ocean. The other side of the street are vines in Manduria where they're growing those world-class primitivos. That's it. We have an appointment at Gianfranco Fino. Gianfranco Fino is Italy's number one wine. So um, Nicole's asking, what wine do we bring back for the restaurant? So Wine from Italy, folks, I'm not allowed to bring wine back from the country and bring it into my restaurant because I have a liquor license. So I'm not allowed to do that. do that for personal use. And you can do that too. You're encouraged to bring wines back. We buy, have to buy the wines from a licensed distributor. So all the wineries that we're going to, we have relationships with the winery because we've been buying the wines from the wholesaler here in the U.S. Some of the wines for as much as 15 years we've been buying the wines. We know the owners. We know the export managers. We know some of the staff there. We, we're in good with the importers. We have these great, amazing connections and relationships that we've built. And that's the biggest advantage of traveling with Jamie and I is, is I'm taking you to places that, that I value my relationship with who – who I'm buying from, with who we're buying from. So that's that's how that works. So we're just not going into wineries blind or anything and be like, hey, we're here, we're from New York, I'm a restaurant owner. No, we're walking into places like Marchese de Barolo and the family, the Donna family is welcoming us, the owner. We're going to places like Bertani, where Giovanni greets us. We were just at uh, L L L L Liliano, Frattoria Liliano, which is Malinchini. It's a 16th century M M Medici estate. Um, Deletta, fifth generation owner, she was with us on the tour. Um, so the owner is there. These are owners typically don't do tours like that because they're involved in doing everything else. They're running the business. So they have, they have people that conduct the tours, but a lot of times the owners will do the tours or the owner will jump on board with us. Um, because of our relationship with them. Now, all the wineries that we're going to like Gianfranco, Gianfranco Fino, uh, Boltramagno, um, the wineries, the wineries in Volturi, uh, the wineries in the south, uh, the Mandurian wineries. We've been to all of these wineries already. We've actually been there. We've met most of the owners. We know them. We know who they are. We've been buying their stuff. So this is the advantage you get from traveling with us. Um, we're taking you to friends. We're taking you to see friends who own world-class wineries in Italy is what's happening. That's basically what this sums down to. And we're showing you our, our, our most favorite cities in, um, in Italy favorite cities, favorite wineries, favorite tours, things like that. So, but all the wineries that we're going to, we have all the wine here. So like Nicole was asking on, on Facebook, what wines are ranked? All the wines are here. So in fact, most of the wines we pour by the glass, a lot of them are for our upcoming trip in November. So you can preview the wine and understand the wine, know the wine before we even go. The thing is they make, a lot of these wineries make so many wines. They'll make 10, 15 wines, but only five of them come into the U S or five out of seven wines come into the U S so we encourage you to ship back or bring back any wines you cannot get in the U.S. and the wines that you can get in the U.S. through a distributor. We tell you to go to this store, that store, that store, and we hand you a piece of paper and say, okay, Matura Wines, here's the importer. Go to your local shop owner, and he can buy all the Grochetto that you tasted 
in Italy, in Umbria or Lazio, from this distributor. And that's how that works. Okay. Um, Jamie and I are going to a major wine tasting in um, New York in February called the Tre Bicchieri. And the Tre Bicchieri is the, 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 it's like the Oscars of the Italian wine world. They're one of the five top rating systems. If you win a Tre Bicchieri, a Gambero Rosso, you're like one of the best wines in Italy. So we go to that tasting. We meet with all the, all the owners are there because these are world-class wineries we're doing with, dealing with. Now, I mentioned Gianfranco Fino. Gianfranco Fino being the number one rated wine in Italy. With Gianfranco Fino, we're going there. It's small. It's in, an, it's in a small village. It's in an alley. It's, it's in an, like, almost like in, a, in, a, in an industrial park. It, doesn't, it was like we were shocked when we got there. We opened up this door and we're like, whoa. Gianfranco Fino. There's five big rating systems in Italy. The Gambero Rosso, uh, Trevi Carries one. And then you have the other magazines and trade journals and met, like Wine Spectator one. They rate all the Italian wines. You take all five trade journals, you add up the points, and one wine rises to the top out of all five. So they could do a cumulative score of all the ratings. So it's a very fair way of assessing the number one wine in Italy. It's just not one publication saying this is it. It's five publications that have agreed on this together. Gianfranco Fino has been on that list twice. They're making world-class Negro Amaro, and their flagship wine is Primitivo. It's from Andoria. Gianfranco, it's not cheap wine. It's on our list for $150 a bottle. We have the Negro Amaro, and we have the Primitivo. Um, I opened it up for my friend a couple uh, last year who owns a bunch of bunch of restaurants. He's never had it. He was Marcus. This is my new favorite wine. This wine is mind blowing. So John Franco Fino, one of the reasons why his wine is so expensive or expensive, more expensive than others. And we're going there. We've already arranged it. We've already been there. We've seen it. We're going there. The reason why his wine, because everything he does is double what he needs. So for example, when it's time to pick grapes, they say industry standards, you have this many rows, this much, this many hectares. You have 10 people. John Franco Fino hires 20 people to pick. He wants the picking quick, less oxidation. They say have one truck or two trucks lined up to haul the stuff back to the winery. John Franco has four refrigerated trucks lined up at the winery and that many people just ushering it back and forth so it goes from the vine right into the refrigerator on in the vineyard, which is not that common to have refrigerated trucks waiting there. So they say to, you know, press them like this, he doubles, you know, he just does, he, they say to put it in the, in the barrel for this long, he doubles, he just doubles everything he can across the board and it shows in his wines. And that's why Gianfranco is making the number one wine in Italy consistently. We're going to take you there. We've been there. It is amazing. And by the way, folks, thanks for tuning in everybody. we got a lot of people on Instagram and both Facebook accounts that I'm streaming on. This does go onto YouTube as well. Um, I see uh, Richard's on, Tom's on, hi Sarah, Beth, how's everybody going? Nicole, of course, we Jack's on, um, uh, uh, Mark, uh, Piper, Michael, who's in the wine world. Uh, Michael knows what I'm talking about a lot of this because he works for a fantastic distributor. Um, so um, we're going over, Jamie dropped, some, dropped a comment for Italy. November 2020. It's VIPWineryVacations.com. VIPWineryVacations.com. Click this Southern Italy link. When you click that link, it's going to open up to a beautiful city, a scene of a city. That is Matera, folks. We are going to be staying in Matera right there in the caves. The cities are listed where we're going. Lecce, Matura, Monopola, Manduria, Arbora Bello. I have to add in Molfetta. I believe we're staying on the coast in Molfetta. Um, beautiful city. I'm not sure if we're stopping in Brindisi. Brindisi's right there. Um, again, Jamie and I just did this route. Everything is listed there that we're going to be at. It's listed by day one, day two, day three, day four, five, six, seven, with the corresponding dates. Um, some of the wineries are listed there. Some of the wineries are uh, most of the wineries are listed there. Some of the cities are listed there. Arbor Bello is an amazing city. They have these really cool. If you scroll down on that page, these white houses with round con conical shaped roofs. The roofs are removable. Southern Italy, folks was a very economically depressed area forever, okay? Back until the 40s and the 50s, people migrated north because to get jobs in Milan and Rome and wherever they could get jobs in Florence. Nobody moved south because the economy was depressed. All the grapes they grew got shipped to the north to make wine. They really weren't a, a wine-making region. They were a, a, a grape-growing region. But in the last 30 years, all these wineries have now 
well, vineyards have now started making wine and making world-class wine and getting all this, all the regulations have come into the South and, and their stamp of approvals, the DOC, the DOCGs, which is a consortium saying, this wine is amazing. Here's your seal of approval uh, to market it and this and that. So these, all these, all the consortium labels, the DOCGs, the DOCs are literally 30, 40 years old. Some of them even less, some of them are 20, 15, 20 years old. So it's really cool. Um, so Arborabello, because it was one of the depressed areas, those roofs would come off. The tax collector would come, they'd remove the roofs, then they wouldn't have to pay as much in taxes because it wasn't really a house. It was just you know, walls without a roof. Um, so they knew the tax collector would come and they'd remove the roofs. So that's why those roofs are conical, cone-shaped roofs on there. Um, so if you scroll down, you'll see Matera, uh, Monopoli, Molfetta's on there. Uh, and that's, a, that's another uh, seaport city, another sea city. All the wine is there, Cantelli. Cantelli, Paolo Cantelli. This vineyard is amazing. World-class wines. They make a million bottles. Um, not a small winery, but family-owned. Paolo and his brother run the place. Um, Paolo came in on a Sunday to do our tour for us. Open up the winery for a tour. This was less last summer for Jamie and I. We're bringing you back to see Paolo. Amazing, amazing wines. His, our Chardonnay by the glass right now is, is Paolo's wine from Cantelli. Um, Consorzio Produttori Vini from Manduria. That's a co-op. Jamie and I aren't really hip on co-ops that much, but I got to tell you, we went to this co-op and we were blown away, blown away. Um, and we serve their wine. We'll be continue to serve their wine. Super high strict standards. Most times when Jamie and I walk into a co-op winery, we typically don't sell their wine anymore. Happened in Spain. Happened in Italy the time before. It happened this trip to Italy, which that that vineyard's not on here. Um, I haven't bought the wine in a while, but we knew of the wine winery. We went in there, we're like, we weren't just that impressed with it. This co-op, highly impressive. They do a fantastic tour, great facility, um, um, just a, a great thing for the town there, and um, great restaurants in the area there. It's an ama amazing wines, shocking wines, shockingly amazing wines, really good. So we're going to take you there. Uh, Valone, uh, Gianfranco. Gianfranco Fino, which is in there. Tenut Rubino, which uh, has an amazing wine. They make, um, oh boy, I have a bottle here somewhere. Um, they make um, Su Seminello. Su Seminello is a grape that was revived by, from them. Uh, one of those 1,300 grape varietals, one of those oddball obscure varietals that's not grown that much. They brought it back and um, really cool. Grafalco, all the hotels, a lot of the hotels are listed there um, on, the, on that page. Uh, some the St. Angelo Hotel, which is uh, the all the caves, the cave hotels in um, in Matera. So VIPWineryVacations.com, folks, go to that website if you are interested in coming to Italy with us. Um, this trip, like I said, we've already sold eight or ten slots. There's only 24 people going. What's going to happen is once your friends find out you're going, they're going to want to jump in with you, and the trip sells out like that. This last year's trip, we literally had people asking us to two months ahead, one month ahead. Or do you have any openings? I want to go. Do you have any openings? I want to go. That's how popular our trips have become because the reputation's going. By the way, we just got an awesome, awesome international award for um, VIP winery vacations. It's uh, we like one like boutique, this boutique wine, wine travel wine tour award. I can't tell you who gave it to us yet because it's not official. But it is awesome. It's an awesome award. We're super happy to have this award because um, we're only four years into this into this business, and we're one full year in of us doing it ourselves, 100%. So that award will be coming up. We'll be able to announce that award at some point. But it is an international wine boutique tour award, best boutique winery, something like that. Um, it's really, really, really cool. So I'm super happy to have that. Um, so the trip will sell out again. The trip will totally sell out again. We're, we're willing to do two or three trips a year. Um, we're just building up to that to, 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 to that level. And again, I started this video out by saying we do charity wine trips. We do charity wine trips where if you have a, a, a nonprofit, a charity organization that you want to do your own, we'll do your own private tour for you, your own private trip. Nobody else is on the trip. It's your group only. And if you have a smaller one, you don't think that you can actually – fill our trips. You can join forces with another charity and you give us 24 people. We handle all the payments. We build you a website. We do all the sales. You just have to hand us people that are interested in going and say, okay, here's our group. Well, and we'll work, we'll, 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 we'll help this and, and work the group 
and and um, and help you show you how to how we do our emails and marketing this and that. You provide 24 people, we donate ten thousand dollars back. So if you know of an organization that could use ten thousand dollars, has to be a nonprofit, has to be a charity. If you know a group that could use ten thousand dollars, tag them in this video. Go to go on Facebook, Instagram. Tag them on this video. Get them onto VIPWineryVacations.com. There is a tab there that says nonprofits. Nonprofit. They hit that tab, and basically, there's a video there of Jamie and I in Tuscany, um, in one of the only circular vineyards, one of the only one handful of circular vineyards in Tuscany, in Italy. And play that video, and it's Jamie and I talking about our charity wine tours, giving back ten thousand um, dollars. That itinerary is there. It is Central Italy. Um, it includes Rome to Florence. We you we pick your own dates. You pick your own dates. It's about forty five hundred dollars. If it's in the middle of August, prices go up a little bit because of course it's in season. Um, and so we do we do this beautiful route that we just did. So um, so again, if you know a charity that could use ten thousand dollars, Jamie and I will donate ten thousand dollars to that charity. We'll work with the charity. We'll do the same payment plan. We'll plan it a year out. Um, and you can be anywhere in the country, folks. We were talking to a couple last night from from just uh, Santa Barbara area. And there they have a, a charity there that they like, okay, that we're very interested. There's a theater up in the San Francisco area that is very, very interested in doing this. So our goal, Jamie and I have a goal of giving away $100,000 to charities in the next few years by doing these wine trips, all right? So that's our goal to give away $100,000 to nonprofits out there. We'll work with you, we'll do our payment plans, we'll do everything, we handle the money, and we give you the money back. So. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. a lot of people from all over the country here tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, and um, that's the rundown, VIPWineryVacations.com. Get on there. Fill out the form that pops up just so you can stay connected. And when we send out emails about Italy, you'll get emails from that um, from that form. And again, this trip will sell out again. So if you're interested, I can send you a digital contract right now. I can go onto the computer here and I can shoot you a digital contract that you can sign and secure your spot. 250 bucks a person is all you need to do to secure that and uh, to secure that spot. And that's it. 250 bucks will secure it. And then you start the payment plan or pay up front, whatever you want to do. But that'll secure your spot. Digital contract through hello sign. I'll send it right off to you. And it's simple as that. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And we will talk to you later. Have an amazing day, whatever you're doing.